Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about how to play Magic cheaply. And one of, this will be a whole bunch of videos, um, but not this week. I've learned that, so I don't know if you guys know this, but I make all the videos in one go. So all the videos are done in like one hour, like at least the filming part of it. And the editing doesn't take me all that long. The uploading is what takes a long time because YouTube is very slow and I live in the middle of nowhere, Texas. So our internet speeds are not, my internet in my office is pretty good. At the old office, it used to be very good, but it was also extremely expensive. At home, it's just like regular internet uh, for Texas. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how to play Magic cheaply, but we won't have like a video, like normally what would happen is all the videos would just connect to each other and it seems like one giant video. But obviously now I'm going to organize and spread out the videos like every week. So one of the ways to play Magic cheaply is to borrow other people's Magic cards. Now, how feasible is this depends on how good of a relationship you have with the person you are borrowing the card from. A lot of my Magic friends are just Magic friends. I never see them outside of Magic. I never talk to them outside of Magic. And in that aspect, I don't really borrow their cards unless it's at the store. Like I'll borrow their cards and everyone's really nice. So they will allow you to borrow their cards in the store and then after the event is over, you just give it back to them. But some of my friends are my, some of my friends are friends who play Magic and that's a little different. And they will let me borrow entire decks and I will let them borrow entire decks. So a lot of times you might be like, why does MTG line borrow only? Like, what are you gonna borrow MTG line when you already have every card you need standard? Uh, Legacy, I borrow a ton of Legacy decks. The, I borrow decks that are over a thousand dollars because of the pimp aids and all of that type of stuff, or just because it's a good deck. And I lend out decks all the time to my friends. And who are these friends? They were former coworkers, they were employees. Um, they were people who I trust because I have a professional or a work relationship with them, so it wouldn't make any sense, although some of them were not working together anymore. Uh, when I first moved to Texas, uh, one of my best friends, um, he plays Magic, he collects Magic, and we were able to change decks and do all that stuff, and we still talk, uh, we text each other almost, you know, at least five out of seven days a week. And these are the people that you, I feel most comfortable lending out and borrowing the cards. Now you might say, okay, I don't have any friends like that. Well, you don't necessarily need, you only need, there's two ways I can see this go, going down. And one would be building up your reputation, going to Friday Night Magic, making friends like that who trust you and you trust them. And then just asking, hey, can I borrow this deck for tonight? And then you borrow the deck for tonight, give back the cards, and that's that. Um, the reason that I like having the deck and taking it home with me is not only does that show that the other person really trusts you a lot, it also means that if you go to Friday Night Magic and that person is not there, you can still run the deck. A lot of times when you are expecting to be lent out cards and the person is not there because, oh, well, it's Friday, you know, <laughs> I have stuff to do on Fridays too, and you're like, okay, well, I'm missing four of this card, four of that card, four of that card. And then you can't play because the deck is not ready. So instead of taking that uh, likely risk, uh, you can just ask for the deck and the deck will, um, you know, you, you have the deck. There's no concern. It's as if you own the deck, really, as opposed to actually borrowing the cards. It's like you can use the deck anywhere you want. Or even if you want to go to play Tuesday Night Magic, just take the deck. You don't need to... Uh, or even if your friend plays at a different location, you just take the deck to your Friday Night Magic and that's fine. Now, how common is this? Um, I've always felt like this was extremely common, but in Virginia, it was ex it was so common because everyone either shared the same card, they like shared a giant card pool from the store, or they um, borrowing was very easy to do at Groovy Gecko's Phoenix Games. Um, I remember borrowing like a ton of cards and I remember lending out a ton of cards and it was really, really fun. Um, it was a good time. I had a blast um, playing with those guys and it's about the community that you're part of. So if your local store is a very good community, they will lend out new players cards, no questions asked. 
because the worst case scenario is uh, when I mean new players, I mean players new to Magic but who have been going to the store for a while. So uh, that's one avenue is to build up your reputation, uh, be trustworthy, and just relate on a personal level to the people you want to borrow cards from. The second one is store owners. Um, there are store owners I know of who love to lend out cards because that allows a person to test a new deck before buying it. And they will allow, there's one of them who my friend owns an anime store. And again, this is, he doesn't play magic. He doesn't really know magic. He knows magic is valuable to make income or somehow, but he doesn't know like how it does so. And he just knows that if he orders boxes, me and my four friends will buy them at, you know, and give him some money for it. But then singles, he really does not know anything about singles. So for him, like, it's like, okay, well, let me, um, what he asked is their driver's license um, or uh, it, in the case of a younger kid, he'll just be like, okay, fine, just take it. Um, and depending on the value of the card, and then he'll let, let out the cards to you and you play with them and then you just give them back after, no cost, absolutely no cost. And this place would be extremely popular if it had more space, but it doesn't have more space. It's a video game store. So, it, I mean, just imagine blockbusters, one half the size of a blockbuster, but with the same amount of like video, instead of videos, you have video games and uh, anime figures. Oh yeah, tons of anime. Like there's this one thing in the middle of the small space. It's like right in the middle, middle of the small space. So if like you filled up for Friday Night Magic, you can't even see the person on the side because like there's this giant display that's like in the middle of like the store and it just has the most beautiful anime figures. We're talking about, actually I picked up an anime figure from there and I'll show it to you. It's a wedding dress, um, very famous anime figure. So if, uh, wedding dress, if you collect the anime figures, all I have to say is wedding dress and you'll probably know which figure I'm talking about because it is a extremely expensive figure and I picked it up and that was a display and I really wanted it and I had enough um, store credit and he put on a discount and I was like, oh yeah, snap by. So yeah, it's one of those weird places um, where the store owner is kind of weird himself and the store owner is running the store at a loss. So he's, he's able to take the loss. I mean, he makes a lot, a lot from his regular job and then the store is only open from like, uh, I want to say like, it's pretty much open whenever he wants it to be open. He has one employee, but his employees are friend. So like, it's really weird. It's kind of like uh, the most weird scenario that you could ever imagine. Like it giant, it literally is a giant p pillar of anime figures, like the most valuable anime figures like that you can buy in the middle. And then there's like a desk, a table here, a table here. And like this table cannot see the other table because there's, there's a giant pillar in the center. <laughs> yeah, uh, but anyway, borrowing cards is from either your friends, from people at your locals, or from your store owner can be a viable way to play Magic uh, cheaply and figure out maybe you don't like that deck, so don't buy it. Maybe you do love the deck, so maybe buy it. Um, and I think that's a very, that's a issue that people don't really talk about very much, and so, bye guys.